Hello everyone, I'm Dina. And I'm Charlotte. Welcome to the Grim Curriculum Extra Credit. Hello. W- welcome, welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I just showed up here at Charlotte's. I got fed. It was great. I'm happy. <laughs> like, I mean, this is awesome. Honestly, I've had a really good weekend. We're recording on Sunday, January 21st, and I got to go wedding dress shopping with my sister yesterday, which was a great success. I'd say for her sister as well. Oh, yes. To clarify. I, I want to see Charlotte in wedding dress, though. One day. One day. <laughs> but no, yes, for my sister. Um, we found her a beautiful dress that suits her perfectly, and she's very happy, and that's all wonderful. And today was uh, great, just lounging around at home. It's a good day. It's a good day. I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom again. Oh, I don't know fuck why. fuck yeah. I love that. I decided that today. I've been wanting to play it, and I have been, ha- like, I've got a hankering for some Red Dead Redemption 2 right now, so Ooh, I think I'm going to start that back up. Another good one and with it being so wintry and stuff and the opening like you know act yes. of the game being all in the winter in the mountains very appropriate I feel. You know what's really weird about Red Dead Redemption for me and this might shock people so I love animals everyone knows that mm-hmm. I could I don't kill spiders like I do not like there's a giant spider I'm dealing with right now and I'm just like we're coexisting because it's <laughs> fine but something about hunting in that game it's very satisfying. I know. What the <laughs> hell? It's so weird. I love it. Like, it's so unlike me. But I even remember, like, back when I was streaming, I have so many clips of me just, like, killing turtles and stuff. And I'm like, this isn't you, Medina. What are you doing? Hey, sometimes video games are a chance to... Um, and those of you out there that are playing Baldur's Gate 3, um, you'll know all about the dark urge that <laughs> you must tend to have. As long as you're... Uh, fulfilling those actions within video games that is fine right i'm gonna kill some bears in the game and in real life it's just me and my spider bro yeah it's cathartic sometimes today we have actually i have an update for you guys on the volcano situation in iceland i have been so eager to hear this i haven't looked it up because you are my volcano source so let's hear it yeah i didn't think that this would be something we were talking about as long as we have been but we've had quite a few updates since i first talked about it i think back in november So Grindavik in Iceland that is having a lot of issues right now with eruptions, they have had another eruption mid-January. On January 14th, 2024, a new fissure eruption began at 7.57 a.m. local time, and it was approximately one kilometer away from Grindavik. Ooh. The previous eruptions had been a few kilometers further out, so this was significantly closer. So they're getting closer to the towns is what you're saying. Yes. Um, It did do some damage. The lava from this new fissure flowed towards the town. Because they've been dealing with this over the last few months with the earthquakes, with the eruptions, they had done some earth moving to try and help channel the lava away from the town which did turn out to be very helpful but like i said there were some infrastructural damage that did occur at 12 20 p.m local time the same day another smaller fissure opened and that was just outside of the barrier on the edge of town and that lava burned three homes completely to the ground shit Yeah, if you're out there and you are interested in this, I definitely recommend looking up the drone footage because it's pretty crazy. You can see the heat from space on like infrared and stuff like that. They're saying that these potential fissures that keep opening could go on for a long, long time. We're talking years into the future that these could still be burning. Can you imagine just having to deal with that in the back of your head? Like, life is hard enough already without a fucking volcano next door. 100%. And it's unfortunate because the town of Grindavik is very well known for that Blue Lagoon hot spring Mm -hmm. and their thermal power station, too. So from a tourist standpoint, yeah, you can come look at the lava, but you may not be able to uh, warm your little buns in the Blue Lagoon anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't fuck around with that stuff. As far as we know, yeah, those new fissures have opened. They are still burning and they may continue to burn for a long time. So that's where we're at with Grindavik. So the updates are just getting worse and worse is what you're saying. Like we haven't, I thought this would end a long time ago. Yes, and they are proving that the lava is continuing to flow like 
under the town, and certain parts of the town have raised nearly five feet in height. Holy shit. Because of all this seismic volcanic activity in and around the town. That's crazy. That's like those islands that come up with underwater eruptions and all of a sudden there's a whole ass new island. Yeah, well they just experienced that just off the coast of Japan as well. A whole new island has popped up. So there's definitely a lot of activity around the globe. But yeah, Grindavik is still burning, unfortunately. I'm predicting some weird, crazy stuff like that happening this year. I mean, already look at our winter. We, We, of course, we've been complaining about the cold, but the cold just hit us. It's been pretty well tropical up until now. So, like, I think we're going to have some wild, wild weather this year. I hate to say it, but I feel like I'm right. I think there's definitely been some kind of shift Mm -hmm. in the environment due to whatever reason is, whether you're a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist or you think it's global warming and climate change. There's definitely been a shift that you can't deny. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see some wild shit. Well, thank you for that update. Honestly, we're all looking forward to hearing more. So keep us posted with that. It's uh, it's scary stuff. I feel so bad for those people. Yeah, I mean, you can't fuck around with Mother Nature. And I feel like a volcano eruption is about as violent as it gets from her. Yeah, and she's she has every right to be mad at us. Yes, 100%. And Mother Nature, we should love her. But uh, I've got a not so good father to talk about now. Oh, dear. All right, so some of you might be familiar with this name, some of you may not. This is a case I've wanted to cover for a long time. I wasn't really expecting to talk about him until I saw this update today that just, like, pissed me the fuck off. And I'm not familiar with this case, so I'm semi-looking forward to hearing about it, but also based on your reaction so far, Mm -hmm. I'm kind of bracing for my my health, my mental health. It's pretty bad. So uh, the fellow we're talking about is Joseph Fritzl, and those of you who know that name know that uh, he is an evil sack of shit. Oh boy. This is an Austrian case. The trial happened not too long ago in 2009, so obviously quite a while ago. Not as far back as we tend to go with a lot of these cases. And he is known for being a rapist, a sex offender. I don't want to go too far into detail because, again, it's a case I want to cover. But he is known for building a secret dungeon in his home that his wife did not know about. Oh my god. He began sexually assaulting his daughter Elizabeth when she was only 11 years old. Oh Jesus. When she was 18, he tricked her into going into this dungeon to go in and take a look, and he trapped her there. Oh my god. He kept her in that dungeon for 24 years. How have I not really heard about this guy? He repeatedly sexually assaulted her over those years. Ugh. And he fathered seven children with her. Ew. Oh, no. You were right. This is awful. He told his wife, who was still living upstairs during this time, that she had run off to join a cult. Oh, God. And that the children that were showing up were just hers because she had had kids and just dropped them off at their doorstep. So what happened was four of the children he kept down there with her that she had to raise in the dungeon, which was, you can look up pictures, there's floor plans and all of this of this area. It is haunting. I don't know why I keep picturing this in like black and white in my head, but you said what, 2009? Yeah. Holy shit. I'm gonna show you a picture of him real quick. Ew. Yeah. Gross, crusty old man. Yep. So the three kids he had his wife raise because he said, oh, she got pregnant. She just sent the kids. These are your grandchildren. You need to take care of them. And the other four, again, lived with her. One of the kids in April of 2008 uh, became really, really sick. And she ended up convincing him to take the child to the hospital with her. So... They ended up taking the child to the hospital, and it eventually became known that she was his daughter. They had noticed that she was so, so pale. All of the children were pale. They had been malnourished. It was obvious that they had been abused very severely. And after that, he was sentenced to a life in prison. As he should be, Jesus. With the chance of parole in 15 years. No! And it is that time. 
oh god no throw the key away yeah th- he he's one of those people they need to just bury him you have lost the rights that you get as a human being by doing what you did he is 88 years old Ugh. he has changed his name because he was getting um accosted by a lot of the other prisoners which uh obviously yeah like, that does not surprise me at all now they are saying that he is showing and i quote genuine remorse which if that phrase sounds familiar, they said the same thing about Rock Terrio. Mm-hmm. And they're also saying that he talks a lot about his family and that it's very, very important to him that his family is doing well. That is so fucking vile. Sir, you don't deserve to have any contact with anyone ever again. No, and Elizabeth is still alive and well. She's still living life. She is doing her fucking best but they're saying that he has early onset dementia that's i suppose to be expected at that age yep and that he's having hallucinations he's really not doing well and they want to release him so that he can go into a care home i don't really know how to feel about that but what i will say is I hope that he's been haunted by his actions every minute of every fucking day, and I hope that he doesn't see any peace, dementia or not. I think you have reaped the benefits that you have sowed. Really? I mean, there uh, we say this all the time. There are some things that you cannot come back from. No, absolutely not. That is vile. It's, I mean, he is... One of the worst people out there, when it comes to these kinds of cases, like, he ruined so many lives, and he didn't necessarily kill anyone, but at the end of the day, he he, he may as well have. Well, the crimes against humanity, absolutely. That is terrible. I hope that his, his children get the fucking help they need. <clears throat> they need, because Jesus... It's, it's terrible. And I mean, the thing to remember with this case is 24 years she was down there. This is very much like the girl in the box. Yep. Oh there, my God. There's a movie called The Room, which I do recommend watching. It's a difficult watch, but it's based on something similar to this. And it's one of those things where she spent all of that time down there and she was being abused the entire time she was made to write letters that he would then send to her mom and say like oh yeah see she's run away to this cult here's the proof and if she didn't write those letters the punishments would obviously be horrific even more so than the stuff that she was already going through and he is just like look up a picture we're we're gonna talk about him in the future because again it's a case i want to cover but he is a vile human being i wish him absolutely no peace they're saying that they're gonna transfer him probably to an open concept prison and then from there into the care facility so i guess we'll see what happens we'll keep you guys posted but um (sighs) i hate it Yeah, I don't wish to see him free. I wish to see him uh, disappearing into the ether, never to be thought of again. They should just feed him to sharks. I mean, really, like, let the sharks eat. And you know what? It's kind of crazy because at the end of the day, he only was convicted in 2009. So he really hasn't served that much time. Not that long ago at all. But nice segue. Speaking of sharks. Oh, I didn't do that on purpose. That's fantastic. The next story is a little more lighthearted. It's a nice science one for you, but it's unusual nonetheless. My favorite kind of shark is the hammerhead shark. I just think they're just like goofy little guys. I love them so much. They're cool. So recently, marine biologists and marine scientists have noticed that mysteriously, Huge groups of female hammerhead sharks are convening together in French Polynesia under a full moon. Okay. I want, I don't recall what a group of sharks is called, but from this point forward, I think a group of female hammerhead sharks should be called a coven because this is some witchy shit right here. I like that. Um, A group of sharks is called a shiver. Oh, I like that too, actually. Right, or a college. (laughs) Interesting, interesting. But yeah, so we have these groups, or rather one large group. The group is primarily made of 55 hammerhead sharks. 54 have been positively identified as female. 
The last one has not been positively identified, but they do think chances are is that she is also a female, just based on the company. Ooh. So in French Polynesia, they attract at certain times of year because of the beautiful warm waters. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, between sort of January and March, of course, we're going through winter. In the Southern Hemisphere, that's the peak of their summer. So the sharks gather for the warm water and the fact that their main food source, some very big rays, hang out there. So they come for food. But they did notice specifically, under a full moon, the ladies gather together more so. This wouldn't be necessarily unusual. You're like, Charlotte, they're fish. They gather in schools of fish. Hammerheads are notoriously lonesome creatures. Ooh. So typically, they don't gather together like this. And the reason that it's all females really remains to be seen. They're not really sure why. Are there any theories? So hammerheads like to gather and eat oscillated eagle rays whose breeding areas around these times are in this area. So they come for basically plentiful food source. And they think either there's some kind of magnetic attraction to the full moon, which a lot of animals do experience, Mm -hmm. or it's simply the fact that under a full moon, the lighting is better and it's easier to hunt. I've got a few theories myself. Okay, I want to hear it. My first theory, they're fucking planning something. Watch out. I'm going to bring it back to The Simpsons. There's an episode of Treehouse of Horror where all the dolphins, they come out of the water, they take (laughs) over the world. That's what I'm seeing here. Hey, and we have seen some pretty rowdy behavior from orcas, from walruses, from, you know, sea lions and stuff even. If you haven't seen Neil the Seal in Tasmania, please go check out Neil the Seal. Love you, Neil. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, marine life that is... uh, Fighting back, so to speak. I've got another theory. Okay. They're done with the male sharks. They're like, fuck you guys. We're going to hang out together, dance naked under a full moon, which like how many of us have wanted to do that? Well, and the thing is, sharks are one of those particular creatures where they've discovered females don't need males to reproduce. They've had singular sharks and Forgive me, I don't remember the particular species, not hammerhead, but there was a lonesome female shark in an aquarium that had a pup. And they were like, she has not been around a male of any kind. She has reproduced by herself. I'm happy for them. You know what? Like, if if that's what the sharks are doing, I'm good for them. Yeah, so over the last decade, these sharks have been gathering under the full moon just to hang out, eat some tasty oscillated rays, Who doesn't want just a night out with the gals? Just, like, eating, swimming, and dancing under a full moon. I'm so down. I guess hammerhead sharks uh, are girls' girls, and I love to hear it. Love it. (laughs) Now, it's going to come off as a science-y kind of thing, but you best believe there's a reason why we're covering it on the Grim Curriculum. This particular story, this particular case, definitely falls under the true crime portion of the Grim Curriculum. Let's talk about nitrogen. Let's talk about it. As many of you may know, nitrogen is a colorless, odorless gas that makes up about 78% of the air inhaled by we humans, and when it's breathed with proper levels of oxygen, of course it's harmless to us. You guys, I love to share things all interesting, but like I just said, this is not going to be an enlightening chemistry lesson about nitrogen. (laughs) It's going to get pretty dark here, and it is pretty topical. It's kind of uh, current event related. So the reason I want to talk about nitrogen today is because the state of Alabama is preparing to use this as a new method of execution. Ooh. Yeah. Now, we've talked about execution a lot. I Mm -hmm. feel like it's just par for the course when you talk about nasty serial killers, etc. It turns out that the chemicals needed for lethal injection are becoming increasingly hard to find because the pharmaceutical companies that make those chemicals are not interested in having them used for the purpose of execution. I've heard of this. And also when they did that big mass execution of a bunch of people a few years ago because all the drugs were expiring and they wouldn't be able to get more. Yeah, so we're, uh, for the states that do have execution and lethal injection as an execution method, it's becoming very difficult to carry out this process. 
Alabama wants to start using execution by nitrogen. Just to explain, execution by nitrogen hypoxia would cause the death of the inmate by forcing them to breathe pure nitrogen depriving him or her of the oxygen needed to maintain the bodily functions. Hypoxia just means lack of oxygen, mm -hmm. right? The theory behind nitrogen hypoxia is that changing the composition of air to 100% nitrogen will simply cause loss of consciousness and then death from lack of oxygen. In theory, what they're saying is the inmate would simply fall asleep and never wake back up. Which, when you hear it like that, sounds very humane, you know, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Turns out there's a little more to it than that, unfortunately. They can't for sure say that death by nitrogen hypoxia would be a peaceful and quiet death. In fact, it likely would not be. It's never been used before as a method of human execution, so they can't really say. In 2018, Alabama became the third state, along with Oklahoma and Mississippi, to authorize the use of nitrogen gas to execute prisoners. But as of today, January 21st, 2024, no state has used it. Okay. That being said, the day after this episode of Extra Credit releases, the first death by nitrogen hypoxia is set to occur. And it's not Joseph Fritzl, unfortunately. It is not Joseph Fritzl. Lethal injection was introduced in 1982. So this is the first new proposed method of execution in quite a long time. Much of what is recorded in medical journals about death from nitrogen exposure mainly comes from industrial accidents where a leak or some kind of fuck up has happened and has killed workers by accident. There has also been suicide attempts by nitrogen hypoxia. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that all being said, you guys have kind of the pre-info of what's about to happen. So we can't talk about this particular nitrogen execution without talking about 58-year-old Kenneth Eugene Smith, he's the fella that's first in line. He is set to be executed January 25th, 2024, which, like I said, is tomorrow, if you're listening to this episode the day it releases. In future episodes, we may have an update on this. Kenneth was convicted of first-degree murder of 45-year-old Elizabeth Dorleen Sennett in Colbert County, Alabama, this is an interesting story on its own, and if you guys want to hear more about this, I would love to cover it. Pastor Charles Sennett Sr., Elizabeth's husband, was seeking a life insurance payout. Mm. He took it upon himself to recruit a fella called Billy Gray Williams to murder his wife. Williams, in turn, then recruited Kenneth Smith, who we're talking about today, and another guy called John Forrest Parker to assist in this murder. Smith and Parker carried out the murder and stabbed Elizabeth to death at their home in Colbert County. A week after her murder, her husband killed himself when he learned that he could possibly be a suspect in the murder. Spoiler alert, if your wife dies, you become the first suspect. Yeah, you're the first person they look at. Billy Gray Williams was sentenced to life without parole and died in prison in November 2020 due to an undisclosed illness. Smith and John Forrest Parker were both sentenced to death. Parker was executed via lethal injection in June of 2010. So Mr. Kenneth Smith is the last of this case to still require justice, I suppose you could say. This is where it actually gets even crazier, if you can believe it. Okay. Smith was initially scheduled to be executed by lethal injection November 17th, 2022. Smith had a motion to stay his execution pending. So they were like, nah, he's not going to be executed, mm -hmm. but it was pending. This was before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit. But at 7.45 on November 17th, 2022... A lawyer for the Alabama Department of Corrections emailed Smith's lawyers to let them know they were preparing him for execution anyway. Ooh. So this is where it gets real dicey. Smith was handcuffed and shackled and taken to the execution chamber 
shortly after this, the 11th Circuit issued this pending stay of execution. And Smith's lawyers were like, yo, it came through. Stop. This is over. They're not even listening. Ooh. The Department of Corrections replied to the lawyers that, yes, they had indeed received notice of the stay, but instead they kept him strapped to a gurney for four hours in the execution chamber. Holy shit. Not only is he waiting for his imminent death, he is being stabbed repeatedly with needles as they're trying to find veins to continue this lethal injection. Oh my god, okay, that's... Oh. <laughs> this next part is from Smith's account that he told his lawyers. He told a member of the execution team that they were inserting the needle into his muscle. The team member on the execution team said that he was lying. So take that as you will. Because they were unable to find a vein, they flipped him upside down into an inverted crucifixion so that they could try to raise his blood pressure to get a vein. Okay, Alabama. They came back a little while later, and they repeatedly stabbed around Smith's collarbone with a needle, attempting to place a central line into, like, a major blood vessel. These results were also unsuccessful. Holy shit. So this man, now don't get me wrong, he had murdered someone. Yes. And the state had decided that he was to be executed. However, the idea that they keep saying about lethal injection, about nitrogen execution, is that it's supposed to be relatively humane. Mm -hmm. I would not consider this shit humane. It would have been faster if they had an elephant step on him and crush him. 100%. (laughs) At approximately 11.20 p.m., Smith's execution was finally called off, not because they recognized the stay of execution, but because they had basically tried so many times to execute him and failed that they called it off as botched. They were intending on executing them him that day regardless. They were determined. So they fucked the whole thing up royally. It was completely botched. This marked the third botched execution in Alabama, just saying. This brings us up to today. Here we are again, only days away from the execution chamber for a second time. He's up now for nitrogen hypoxia. His lawyers are asking the federal courts to stop the execution, arguing that if something goes wrong, he might vomit, he might asphyxiate, Or, if it goes horribly, horribly wrong, he may live, but as a persistent vegetative state. So, his lawyers so far have been unsuccessful. Dr. Jeffrey Keller, the president of the American College of Correctional Physicians, so doctors that work within prisons in the states, he is quoted as saying, It's also proposed to be painless, and I know that that is wrong. The proponents refer to people who have become nitrogen intoxicated during airplane flights or scuba diving and then woke up and reported they didn't feel anything. However, the incarcerated person knows exactly what's going to happen. So he says previously when people have been poisoned by nitrogen, it just happened. They weren't expecting it. Whereas as an inmate strapped to a gurney and then having a face mask strapped to you, you're going to receive those levels of anxiety when you know your death is coming. Well, yeah, you can't exactly prepare for that. He basically said, if I told you at 11 a.m. tomorrow that I'm going to place a plastic bag over your head and suffocate you to death, of course you would have intense anxiety and fear and the release of stress hormones up until the moment that it happens. Is that suffering? Of course. But how much they'll feel when the nitrogen hits, I don't know. Because again... Nobody knows. So, yeah. I mean, they're getting creative. Like, I think about Andre Chikatilo, one of the worst serial killers of all time. They just shot him in the back of the head. That's true. In a couple of states, because of the lack of chemicals needed for lethal injection, like I mentioned before, they have created firing squad uh, areas. So the firing squad is back on the table. I believe there are still... Still some states that have the electric chair, but I'm not sure how often that's actually used these days. Execution's always one of those topics that gets pretty heated, I feel like. What would you pick? 
if I had to pick a method, yep. I think I'd do firing squad, to oh, be honest. Oh, fuck yeah. I would want it bullet to the brain over immediately. Yeah. I would not want it drawn out. We've read and talked about botched executions before, especially with the electric chair. Like, the botched shit that went on with that when it was first created Mm -hmm. doesn't bear thinking about there's some real nasty situations that happened and we've um we've heard and seen of really really gnarly lethal injection ones too so not a fun way to go not a fun way to go but again i will uh, keep an eye on this one we'll see if mr kenneth smith manages to dodge the execution chamber again I don't know that he's going to, but we will wait and find out. You never know. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens uh, the day after this episode comes out. We'll keep you guys posted. Yep, you might be hearing about this on the next episode of Extra Credit. And speaking of dying, as we often do, it's that time again, friends. It's time for our next strange and unusual death. Now, initially, I had one for you, but on deeper research, it turned out that it wasn't true at all, which was really sad. So, Dina delved into the rabbit hole and pulled one out for us. I've got an interesting one for us today. This is the story of a fella named Bobby Leach. Okay. And Bobby, he was like a daredevil. He was up for anything. This was in 1926 that this happened. And uh, I'm going to tell you what he did first, and then I'm going to tell you how he died. Okay. One day, he decided that he wanted to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Oh, classic. And so he fucking did. He was the second person ever to do it. He did this on July 25th, 1911. The first person who did it was Annie Taylor in 1901. So yeah, it was a lady that did it for the first I time. Did, it was fucking cool. I did know that. She must have had balls of steel because shit. I wouldn't fucking do that. No, That's absolutely no, not. No, thank you. So he did spend six months in the hospital after this because he, he broke- was pulverized. Oh, yeah. He broke both of his kneecaps. He fractured his jaw. Like, this was bad. One day, he was performing with the Barnum and Bailey Circus. And he watched a guy dive over 150 feet into a pool that was five feet deep. And uh, the guy died. Oh, my God. So Bobby decided, fuck it, I'm going to do this. In 1920, he returned to Niagara Falls, and he operated a pool hall, which was super fun. When he was in his 60s, he decided to swim some whirlpool rapids, and he failed, but he survived. He was fine. He was rescued, and everything was fine. So he survived Niagara Falls. He survived this crazy dive. He was hard to kill. Until one day in 1926, he was on a publicity tour in New Zealand where people came out to see him because he was a super cool daredevil guy. He slipped on an orange peel on the ground. Oh, not even a banana peel. An orange. And uh, the leg where he cut himself became infected and then had to be amputated. Oh my God. Two months after that, he died of complications. Oh, are you kidding me? The man goes down Niagara Falls and survives, but then dies of sepsis from slipping on an orange peel? On an orange peel. Lady Luck looked down on him that day and said, you've had enough. Yep, his luck definitely ran out because, I mean, death by orange peel? Not as cool as death by Niagara Falls, I'm not going to lie. No, at least it would have been understandable. Right, Poor man. But you said he was in his 60s when it happened. So he was 68 years old when he died. Lived a pretty cool life, but uh, that's a shitty way to go. That's ironic, I guess. Yeah, so rest in peace, Bobby Leach. Daredevil extraordinaire taken out by an orange peel. Don't fuck with those orange peels. Watch where you're going. I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) All right, everyone, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Thank you so, so, so much for hanging out. I know we missed a few. We are back on track. It is so great to be back with extra credit. I have said it a million times. I love this show. We have so much fun just (laughs) laughing and talking about nonsense. We are going to be doing a very fun episode on the regular show this week. It's going to get a little... uh, Spooky. Yeah. Yeah. 
So again, yeah, thanks for listening. If you have those stories you'd like us to take a peek at, or if you just have a grim encounter of your own, we're always looking for submissions to talk about your guys' grim encounters on the regular show. Send those in to thegrimcurriculum at gmail.com or feel free to DM us on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, let's talk about it. 100%. We recently uh, got to 800 subscribers on YouTube, which was pretty awesome milestone we're growing a little bit each time thanks to everybody that supports us so again humongous thank you as always and with that thank you all so much for listening this has been the grim curriculum extra Extra credit. credit